so uh, in last lecture we saw about the introduction to dft now let's move towards its definition that is this is for dft and it is for inverse dft so it is being denoted by x of k so x of a is given by summation n equals 0 to n minus 1 x of n e raised to minus j 2 pi by n k into n where k will k is ranging from 0 to n minus 1 and similarly the inverse dft that is 1 upon n summation k so this is the point to be noted that over here the summation was from n equals 0 to n minus 1 here it is from k equals 0 to n minus 1 so this is the point to be noted okay so don't mistake in your examinations x of k e raised to j 2 pi by n this whole thing remains same except this sign that is here negative here positive and now let us define something important called twiddle factor and it is being denoted by wn so what is twiddle factor e raised to minus j 2 pi by n is nothing but twiddle factor so we can define it also like this that cos 2 pi by n minus j sin 2 pi by n as per Euler's identity so this is about definition part now let's move towards example and please remember this twiddle factor we will be playing with this twiddle factors in by discussing its properties and also you will encounter this twiddle factor very much in fast Fourier transform so please note this okay now uh, we will be moving towards uh, examples directly so uh, one by one i will write examples so let's move towards very first example so uh, let's move towards very first example that is our sequence is given and we have to compute its four point dft that is n equals to four so we can say k equals to four so uh, writing the definition and substituting n equals to four we will get this now putting our limits that is n equal to 0 so we will get x of 0 because e raised to 0 is 1 then we will get x of 1 e raised to minus j 2 pi by 4 into k then x of 2 e raised to minus j 2 pi by 4 into 2k then minus 2 pi by 4 times 3k now what we have to do we have to put the values of k one by one because we know k is also ranging from 0 to 3 so what we will do for k equals to 0 so we will get x of 0 it is nothing but we know x of 0 this is x of 0 so x of 0 is 0 plus x of 1 we know x of 1 is 1 so it is 1 plus k 0 so e raised to 0 is 1 Similarly, x of 2 is 2 and x of 3 is 3 because e raised to 0 is 1. So, 0 and it is nothing but 6. Now, similarly for k equals to 1, we will get x of 1 is nothing but we have x of 0 is 0. So, we will not write now. So, e raised to minus j 2 pi by 4. Then, direct we are writing x of 1 is 1 and e raised to minus j 2 pi by 4 for k equals to 1. Then, x of 2 is nothing but twice e raised to minus j we are having now 8 pi by 4 because our value of this uh, 2k so twice times k equals to 1 so we will be getting uh, sorry we will getting 4 pi by 4 not 8 pi by 4 so this is because 2 to the 4 so 4 pi by 4 then we will get thrice e raised to minus j we have uh, k is 1 over here so we will get 6 pi by 4 so this is minus j this is minus 2 and this is as per the Euler's identity so we will get minus 2 plus 2j similarly calculating for k equals to 2 will lead x of 2 equals to minus 2 and for k equals to 3 x of 3 will be 
minus 2 minus 2 here. Always remember that this x of 1 and this x of 3 will both come conjugate of each other. That is, this sign is only changed. If you are not getting like this, then you have mistaken. So, our final sequence is 6, comma, minus 2 plus 2j, comma, minus 2, and minus 2 minus 2j. This is our x of k and this is our sequence and this is our origin. So, uh, this is the way to calculate. Now, suppose, let's say I, someone says that we have to calculate 8 point DFT. For some another sequence so what will happen it will be quite a bit lengthy process and that's the reason why fast Fourier transforms are being developed that is the other issue we will discuss in lecture of fast Fourier but this is just for the information purpose so we will be discussing more problems on this so let's move towards next problem that uh, In this we have to prove something that is show that so this is the very simple question so first of all let's read the question that it is saying that the summation from k equals 0 to n minus 1 mind the limit is of k okay is being given by n if n equals to m and 0 elsewhere so very simple this is the summation of uh, infinite it's not infinite but this is a finite gp so Suppose let let's take this because the limit is of k. So except this k, what is the remaining? Is whole some constant let's say a. So we can write this as a raised to k and summation k is from zero to n minus one. So clearly, if a equals to one, then what we will get? If a equals to 1, 1 raised to anything is 1. So answer will be n only. For a equals to 1. And for a not equals to 1, it is other than 1. What we will get? We will get something like this. Upon 1 minus n as per our geometric progression formula. So same is applied over here. But the difference is that e raised to minus j to pi by n into n minus m is a over here. So what it follows, it follows that first for n equals to m, we will get a is 1 and so a is 1 because this is 0 and e raised to 0 is 1. So what is the summation? Summation k equals to 0 to n minus 1, 1, it is nothing but n. So first part is being proved. Now second part. So for n not equals to m, what we will get? We will get the whole summation. 0 to n minus 1, which is k, e is to j 2 pi by n, k times n minus m, 1 minus e is to j 2 pi k, n minus m, upon 1 minus e is to j 2 pi by n, into n minus m, clear? So, now, this is the point to be noted that this is 1 because e raised to j 2 pi times some integer 2 pi times anything is 1 only it's nothing but even integers of pi only and it is in power of e raised to j times e1 pi okay so even multiples of pi so it is nothing but 1 minus 1 in numerator and denominator is as it is so it is 0 so this is our answer which is being proved Thank you.